today is going to be the first video in my three-part series where I compare and contrast the three predominant types of tract home builders that are operating in the United States. This video today will focus on the design center model, which has been the most predominant model in the United States for the last several decades and has only recently yielded way to the new builder models such as the everything's included model and the package model that a lot of the tract builders are starting to adopt. Builders operating on the design center model are going to give you the opportunity to customize your new home in five distinct categories. The first category is going to be exterior elevation, the second will be structural options, the third will be the design center, the fourth will be low voltage and pre-wiring meeting, and the fifth will be choosing the actual lot within the neighborhood that the house goes on. By the way, my name is David Hakimi, I'm a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and I'm one of the top new construction specialists in the state of Colorado. As much as I like to make these informative videos about new construction, I'd much rather be out helping you buy a new construction home from a builder. My commission is paid 100% by the builders, so it doesn't cost you anything to bring my representation. You've got a ton to gain and nothing to lose. So if you want my help buying a new construction home from a builder here in Colorado, my contact info is in the description below. Please reach out to me. Let's go look at some new houses. The first category that they're going to let you start the customization in is the exterior elevation. Elevation simply refers to the way the front of the house looks and most municipalities require the builders to offer every model they build in three to five elevations and they do this for a monotony rule so that the house uh, houses in the neighborhood don't look too cookie cutter as you look through the neighborhood if you've got five of the same models being built they want five variations of each of those five models on the exterior to keep the monotony in the neighborhood to a minimum and make the neighborhood look nice and diverse and complex and more like a custom home neighborhood and these uh, exterior elevation options are going to feature things like the siding, the front porch, uh, the choice between trims. So do you want brick on the front of the house? Do you want stucco on the front of the house? Do you want faux stone on the side of the house? Those are all going to be different options offered within the different elevations. And of course, they do come at a different cost too. Some of the elevations are going to be standard. Uh, in fact, they will give you a standard choice that does not come as an upcharge. And then usually the other three to five elevations do come at an upcharge because they get nicer materials and maybe a little more complex architecture like a covered front porch, etc. So so that's the first place that you'll find that your building cost starts to vary is on the elevation you pick for your particular model. So the second category that the builder is going to let you customize the home in will be structural options. Structural options are actually chosen with you and the builder salesperson while you sit down in the builder sales office. They'll actually build the house on the computer with you and they'll run through all of the different structural options that are available for the base model that you've chosen. So the nice thing about structural options are you'll have the price of what you choose hammered down before you ever leave your initial contract session with the builders representative which is nice because you're trying to gauge where you come in on budget and it's nice to be able to know where these things land before you get up out of that first meeting some of the things that structural options include are gonna be things like ceiling height do you want the standard 8 foot ceilings in the home or do you want 9 10 11 12 13 whatever they're offering in that house as an upgrade the next thing would be things like interior door heights do you want the standard six and a half foot doors do you want seven foot doors or do you want the new taller eight foot doors to give the house and more grand appearance. Those are all chosen during the structural options visit. The other thing would be with a lot of these models, they're going to offer something like a fourth bedroom or a loft, and you may have to take your choice between the two and so that they know how they're going to build the particular home for you based on your requirements. Other things would be things like a two car garage versus a three car garage. Other things would be things like a bump out or an extended breakfast nook. Uh, Richmond here in Colorado has a model called the uh, Hemingway that is very popular and it's a way different house if it's built with or without the breakfast nook. So these are all things that you'll choose in the structural options meeting. Also things like, do you want standard sliding glass doors or do you want the entire sliding wall that's now become a big option with builders? So these are all common things that you'll choose during your structural options meeting, as well as things like full or partial basement ex excavation. Do you want them to dig a half basement or do you want them to dig a full basement that mirrors the entire downstairs of the house? The other thing you can also choose would be how deep do you want them to dig the basement? Does it have to have standard eight foot ceilings or do you want an extra deep basement with a 9, 10, 11 or 12 foot ceiling in it? These are all things that some of these track builders will let you choose during your structural option meeting. And then the last thing would be things like can light placement and fixture placement. That's also usually chosen during structural options. The third category that you get to customize your home with a design center builder is going to be 
the design center. And for a lot of people, this is the most fun part of the process because this is where you get to customize the home and make it fit your taste and your personal style. You're gonna pick everything here from cabinets to appliances, wall colors, plumbing fixtures, lighting fixtures, trim for the baseboards, trim for the crown molding, doorknobs, paint colors, you name it, all that stuff is in the design center. So this is the most fun part of the process, but it's also the most challenging because you gotta exercise a lot of self-control to stay within budget and not exceed what you're qualified for on your loan. You also might have to make some compromises in the design center because sometimes the stuff that you want just adds up to more money than what you're budgeted for and you've gotta exercise a little bit of control to rein that back and keep it within a range that keeps the house at your price point. The fourth category that most design center builders will let you choose from when you customize the home will be low voltage options. Low voltage options are going to be things like the placement of ethernet connections, whether you still want a landline connection in the house, surround sound pre-wiring. If you want to do a home theater in the house, they can actually pre-wire the walls and the ceiling with in-ceiling speakers for surround sound. Things like security system pre-wiring can still be done. If you opt to do a wired security system and you want extra sensors on doors and windows. And then the last thing that you pick in the low voltage would be things like smart home connectivity. If you want to make a smart home, things like Nest uh, thermostats and so forth can be chosen during this meeting with the builder. The fifth and final category that comes into play when you're buying a home from a design center builder is going to be the lot selection. Lot selection can actually vary wildly depending on the square footage of the lot, the placement of the lot in the subdivision. Of course, some lot placement is more prime than others if it's far away from a busy street or does it back to a busy street? Of course, those lots that back to the busy street are gonna be less desirable and usually less expensive. Here in Colorado, we sometimes deal with view lots. So if you've got a lot that backs up with a west-facing mountain view in Denver, of course, that's an ultra premium lot that they're gonna charge quite a bit of money for. And then the next step down to that would be a lot that possibly backs to something like an open space or a green belt. Of course, those lots go for more money because a lot of people don't want another house staring directly back into their backyard. So lot placement is gonna be a big factor on the price of the house. And it will also determine whether whether you build a house that has a standard below ground basement or possibly a garden level with some windows above grade or a walkout basement that you can actually walk completely out of. Of course, to build garden level and walkout basements, your home has to be built on a sloped lot and the sloped lots that can accommodate walkouts and garden levels always come at a premium as well. I'm gonna take a minute now to summarize the pros and the cons of the design center model compared to the everything's included model and the package model. The first main pro of the design center model is obvious and that's the fact that you get the most customization on all of the things that we just talked about. The second big pro of the design center model is that you simply end up with a much higher end home. So if you're going for an upscale home, an executive home, and you don't quite wanna pay for a custom or a semi-custom, but you want the nicest home that you can possibly get in a track community, the design center model is gonna allow you to do that because you can pick from much higher end finishes and you can really go as high as you want with the sky the limit on what you spend and how nice you deck out the interior of the home when you're buying from a design center builder. Like everything in life, the pros of the design center model definitely come with some cons as well too. Right off the bat, the first con with the design center model is that it's typically gonna be the most expensive home to buy out of the three models because like we said, you can choose everything and people tend to go a little bit crazier with the design center model and the builders tend to nickel and dime you on every little choice that you make. So the design center model homes typically end up being the most expensive of the three tracked home models. The second big con that we see with the track, with the design center model is that a lot of people are forced to make some compromises. With the package builders and the what you see is what you get builders, you either like the home or you don't, and they don't present you with a ton of choices. With the design center model, they are gonna give you every conceivable choice, and a lot of times when you start to line up every single thing that you would ideally put in the home, it just gets too expensive. So a lot of the process with a design center builder is gonna be managing the compromises that you have to make in order to keep the house uh, at a level where you can afford it. And then third, along that same line, is the design center model homes are gonna be the most likely to fail to appraise. Because let's say you got an unlimited budget or a very generous budget, and you do go crazy in the design center and the structural options and the low voltage, and you pick a premium lot, you may actually end up possibly over improving the home for the rest of the neighborhood and you'll come into a point where no one else has built one that nice. They don't have the comparables to appraise it for what your build cost comes to. And sometimes you'll actually appraise less than what you've built, which can be tricky with some builders because a lot of times their contract is gonna require you to bring that difference in the event of a low appraisal. 
the uh, next con would be it's harder to gauge the final cost that you're going to pay. While they come up with the base price in the design center and they're going to give you the lot price, the lot premium price in the design center, and you also know the structural options before you stand up and leave the sales office, you don't necessarily know what you're going to encounter in the design center. So most builder salespeople will give you a range that the typical buyer in the neighborhood has spent to build your model. So they give you a ballpark on where you're going to be, but that's no guarantee. A lot of people exceed that level and it gets tough to keep the budget where you thought you were going to be when you were sitting in the design center. Uh, and one of the other big cons with the design center is because they do allow more customization, the houses aren't as cookie cutter. The construction workers are definitely building different blueprints based on the different structural options that each buyer chose. So the build time can actually be a little bit longer because they're not blasting through the exact same layout on every home in the neighborhood like some of the package builders and the what you see, what you get builders do. So it definitely takes longer uh, to build those. And then finally, lot selection can actually be limited when you're dealing with a design center builder because different structural options may or may not fit on the lot that you want. Uh, and the other problem that you run into when everyone's allowed to choose their elevation, if you choose a lot and a floor plan that you like and one of the neighbors has chosen the same floor plan too close and the same elevation too close, they might not let you build the elevation that you want because it's simply too close for the monotony rules of uh, the city that you're building in or the municipality to adhere to keeping the houses different and unique enough. So you may be forced to choose an exterior that you don't like, or you may choose to forego some of the structural options that you want in order to fit it on a particular lot. One of the main things we see that falls into that category would be three car garages. Uh, there may be an ideal corner lot that you love that has a view, but it just might not be wide enough to accommodate the extra width of the third car garage. So sometimes you get uh, run into an issue where you're having to choose between the lot that you like and the structural option that you like. So I hope you found today's video helpful. And if you did, and you want to watch the follow-up videos in this series where we talk about the Everything's Included Builder and the Package Builders, click the card at the top of the screen and it'll take you to either one of those videos so you can see the compare and contrast of the three main builder types prevalent in the United States today.